This is Cheryl from Silver Sage Studio, and today I'm going to be testing a product that's new to me. Hey everybody, I wanted to go ahead and try these new acrylic painters that I got. Um, well, I shouldn't say they're acrylic because I'm a little confused, but I'll come to that in a minute. Um, I got these for Christmas. I had put them on my Amazon wish list. What I'm confused about is that it says here acrylic painter. But on the back, it says, um, I'm trying to zoom in here so you can see, water-based, waterproof, light fast, well covered, widely used. Um, it also says works on rocks, stone, paper, canvas, glass, ceramic, plastic, fabric, wood, metal, etc. Um, what I don't know is if they're acrylic, are they water-based? Um, ink because it seems to me like acrylic and water-based are two different things and maybe I'm misunderstanding what they're trying to say maybe it has something to do with translation maybe I don't really know what I'm talking about I don't know um, I'm gonna read the instructions really quickly shake pens up and down for several times press the tip down for a while until the ink flow up to the tip recap the pen tightly after used please store the products in a horizontal position so most acrylic ink pens that's what you have to do you um, shake them and then you have to pound them onto a surface until the ink gets flowing um, I wanted to open up a couple of these and try them out on some various surfaces and just kind of see how they work so what's kind of cool about this set is that there are um, some basic colors but there's also a gold and a silver so that might be fun to use and of course a white so these do say acrylic painter so I'm just going to assume that that whole water-based issue that it's saying the water-based um, language is probably inaccurate and it probably has something to do with the translation because as you can see um, this is not an originally a product from an English speaking country. So um, it, it says they're acrylic painters, acrylic pens. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up one of them and I'm going to start with the white, I think. And I'm going to shake it up for the instructions. And then I'm going to a little bit. Hold it down till the ink gets flowing. This is pretty normal um, for a water, or excuse me, an acrylic based marker. Woo, that writes very nicely. I hope it continues to write that nicely. It's a very opaque white. I like that. I'm writing on right now a very textured cardstock. I don't know if you can see the texture on there. Um, the Lawn Fawn cardstock. What's nice is that you can do dots, you can do lines. Um, if you hold it straight up, it looks like a thick line, kind of at an angle, maybe slightly thinner, but that's probably about as thin as you're going to get. Okay, let's try a different color. Let's try one of the metallics. But what's happening here is that when you first take the lid off, the paint is up here and it hasn't worked its way down through the nib yet. So that's what you're doing when you're pressing down is you're giving the ink an opportunity to flow down. That silver is very nice. I really like that silver. If these don't dry out, they're gonna be great pens, I think. Let's try another one. Let's try the yellow and see how opaque that is. I was really impressed with the white and how opaque the white was. Okay, the yellow is not quite as opaque as the white. Um, but I could always draw over the white. with the yellow and get a more opaque yellow, I suppose. Um, the dots come out fairly opaque, but the lines do not. 
on with some watercolor paper. I'm going to assume this is going to be fairly similar to the cardstock. That yellow looks nice and opaque um, when it's on the watercolor paper. One thing I want to do is test out what happens when you first put it down and wet it. So you could blend this out just a little bit, like putting acrylic paint down when it's first wet, and blending it out. But as I'm getting to the areas that have dried a little bit more, that's harder to do. Okay, um, okay. let's try writing onto some acetate and see how that goes. I think I'll do that with the white and a color. Woo! That gives a nice opaque look. Sorry about the dogs barking. Somebody just walked in through the front door. I'm going to let that dry. I'm just going to set it aside. I don't want to heat it. I do have heat resistant acetate, but I don't um, have that out right now. So I'm going to set this aside and let it dry and then see how, um, if it's permanent on that acetate or if it's going to smudge off. Now this is my art journal page and I wanted to just maybe open up a page here and do some doodling and see how it does on top of acrylic paint. I think I'll go ahead and just add some white dots all the way around. I do like how easy it is to do dots on this. Okay, so I have here a rock um, that I painted with gesso over the whole thing. On this part of it, I painted with golden acrylic ink. And the reason I'm doing this, even though I tested in my art journal, is that golden paints, I keep saying golden inks, I'm sorry, this is a golden acrylic paint. Golden paints tend to be glossier than a lot, a lot of the craft paints. So let's see if I can pull this over here. Um, those paints are fairly matte. These are craft paints. I really kind of prefer matte, to be honest with you. Um, but acrylic paints or golden paints are so amazing because their pigmentation is just beautiful. Um, but as you can see there, it's a little bit gloss. So I'm going to test out the ink pens on the gesso, on the gloss paint, and just on the rock itself. Um, one thing to keep in mind, um, say with the gesso or with the, the matte gels, the, or the both the matte and the gloss gel, which I'll be trying later, is you really want to make sure that everything is dry before you use these pens. Um, because in my experience, I have clogged up nibs using them on a gel medium, thinking that it was completely dry when it wasn't. So I'm actually not going to test this tonight. I'm going to let it sit overnight and check that out tomorrow and see how the pens do with that. Okay, and I realized earlier, I apologize, that I was shaking the camera when I was pounding the pen onto the table. Um, my camera is actually mounted onto the table. So I apologize for that. I'm not going to use any pens that I haven't already got the, the paint flowing on them. So I'm just going to go ahead and test out on the gesso. I'm starting with the silver. Seems to write just fine, but obviously there's not a lot of contrast there. So let me do that here. Let me do that with a different color. I think I'll do it with the blue so you can see it on the gesso. That seems to work quite well. And then, of course, on the orange. That looks like it's school colors. I bet you there's a school that has orange, silver, and blue as their colors. Um, works fine. I'm just going to wait a second before I test, test it on the rock itself because I can tell it's still a little bit wet. Um, then I also painted some of this golden paint on this um, table paper I have. This is just packing paper, and then I use it sometimes on my table um, when I'm working, and then that gives me, as, as it gets colored up, it can end up being very nice bottom layers for things, for projects when you need some color to start with. So it works, honestly. Um, I'm really surprised at how nice 
these pens are to write with. I hope they last for a while and don't clog up on me because they're going to be fun to use in art journal pages to decorate on cards, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to turn the rock over and I'm just going to write love again. Um, it writes just fine. It doesn't look quite <laughs> as opaque on the rock. It must be, I don't know if it's getting a little bit absorbed into the rock. Um, it's not sitting on top of the rock in the same way it was with some of the other products I was doing it on. Um, but I do want to point this out that this here is still wet. The white is still wet. So if I were to smudge it, that's what would happen. So definitely, if you're going to get these pens, do be wary of the fact that they will smudge. Okay. And let's try seeing how opaque the blue is. It's pretty nice, actually. It's like I've just painted it with regular paint. Let's see how well the yellow does. Again, the yellow is a little bit more transparent on the rock. I had to go over it a couple of times to get a nice solid color. Here I have a piece of vellum. I do believe this is Simon Says Stamp Vellum. And I'm going to test out the markers on the vellum. This is the gold pen. The, a couple of the pens do have kind of a funky smell. This one in particular does. I went ahead and activated all of them. The blue's, again, a nice solid color. One thing that I think is interesting is that it comes with a yellow then two shades of orange. This is actually more orange than yellow. It looks a little bit yellow on the screen, but it's kind of a light orange and then a medium orange. And then the red is kind of an orangish red. And I'm taking a piece of cardstock here and I'm just gonna color out all of the colors. do next is test that all of these colors blend out. Now something I think that's kind of interesting here, I don't know how well you can see it. I'm um, going to see if I can put this on autofocus and hold this up closer. I'm trying to get it to focus. The purple is not nearly as solid of a color as some of the others in the sense that it's not quite as opaque. You're seeing some of that white come through. I can't quite get it to pick up on camera. Um, but the other ones, it really is like you have acrylic paint on the surface, but this purple just kind of seems to soak in for some reason. I wonder if I didn't shake it up enough. Maybe that's what's going on. Let that try and see what happens. Okay, so this is dried on the vellum and it stays very nicely. It's not scraping off. Um, I have noticed 
that it's buckling a little bit, primarily under the gold. So the gold must just be wet enough that it's causing the paper, paper to buckle. That's not happening on any of the other colors. I'm gonna scribble out in the silver and see if the silver does the same thing. We'll set that aside. So at this point, what I wanted to do was to test that blending that we did with the yellow a little while ago. I kind of liked that, and I thought that might work for a lot of different things, but I want to see if it works for every color. So I'm just going to draw a line here of each color and use a water brush. Probably should use the same one I used earlier to blend out those colors. It looks warmer on camera than it does on in real life. It's not quite so brownish in real life. So most of them moved. The purple really didn't want to move. Um, the yellow seems to be the best. So I'm glad I tested this out because the yellow was the one that I tried it on and it moved really nicely. And so I thought they would all um, act the same way. Let's try the white. Um, obviously, this isn't watercolor paper. Let's see if we can get the white to move a little bit. Yeah, that's not working so well, but part of it's because I think it's not watercolor paper. So let's go back to this. The silver does seem to be buckling a little bit. Can you see that? See how it's not buckling here at all, but it's buckling under the gold and the silver. So um, it seems like the metallics kind of cause the paper to buckle a little bit when it's light paper, like this, like this vellum. Okay, I'm back. It's the next day. I have my gel medium on here. They have both dried. Here is the matte, which you can't really see because it's matte and clear. Um, here's the gloss, which if I hold it up to the light correctly, you can see. So let's see how these pens do. Works very nicely on the mat. And let's try on the gloss. Okay. Um, it is very wet on the gloss, so I want to make sure that I don't smudge that and give it a chance to dry. Let's see, yeah. And even on the mat, it's still a little bit wet. There. Let's set that aside for a couple of minutes and see how it dries and if it is not smudgeable once it dries. I can see like the gold and the purple are still very wet. Okay, one last substrate I wanted to try which is Yupo paper with alcohol ink on it. So let's see what happens when we color on that. Okay. 
This is just a scrap that I had lying around where I was testing some things. Because the purple is not completely opaque, it's picking up some of that color in the background and making kind of a muddy color, which is fine. Sometimes that's what you're going for. Seems to color just fine, but again, it's not drying quite as quickly as it was in some of the other substrates. So let's set that aside for now. So I set this aside for just a few minutes, maybe three at the most, and it seems to have dried. It's not smudging anymore. It seems to be permanent. Man, that blue though really wants to smudge. I don't know why. Um, it's not smudging on the gloss, but for some reason it's smudging on the mattes. Um, the pink's not smudging, the gold's not smudging. Um, the purple's not smudging, but I did pick up some of that purple, but in all fairness, it might not have completely dried there. Okay, so in short, these seem to write very well on gel medium. I smudged the blue, but now that it's dried a little bit more, it's not smudging at all. So just keep in mind that you need to let these dry if they're on some sort of slick surface a little bit. Um, give it time to dry, just like you would with any acrylic paint. Let's look at the other substrates here that we played with. Um, the acetate, it really was, it wrote very nicely on the acetate. I was very happy with that. <clears throat> Worked great on the vellum. Just keep in mind that the gold and the silver did cause the vellum to buckle just a little bit. This was the swatch that I did of all the different colors. They're pretty solid colors. The purple, I wouldn't say is transparent, but it's not quite as opaque as the others. The others are pretty nice, solid colors. This was when I blended it out. The gold, the black, and the yellow really like to blend out. The others are pretty much in between. The purple got absorbed quite a bit by the paper. I think the purple's probably a little bit more water-based and less acrylic, maybe. That's why it's getting sucked into the paper. I'm not really sure there. Regular cardstock seemed to work wonderfully. It wrote on top of alcohol ink on Yupo paper and Yupo paper without alcohol ink. And also wrote very nicely on um, acrylic paint. This is matte acrylic paint for the most part. It did nicely on a slightly more glossy acrylic paint here. And it wrote nicely on a rock, although I really did prefer it with a base coat of either gesso or acrylic paint down on there. Otherwise, it wasn't quite opaque, although I wouldn't say this is bad. I just like this look a little bit more. So there you go. In short, I think these are great paint markers. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and go have fun crafting.